I don't know about you, this is the hardest series I think we've ever done. You know what you're gonna get? Get a better waffle. I'm gonna have some ball. Get the delicious treat. You got the hearty meal. <laughs> yeah. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. Come on, this does not look good. This does not look good. But this shouldn't be hard at all. In my mind, I was thinking there was seasoning. I think that's just the hot sauce I always add. Literally just potato, sausage, and egg. I don't see one speckle of like pepper. Mm -hmm. Soft punk here at all. So there's definitely ways that we can reimagine this just a little bit. You went for the whole plate as well. Hey, bro, we don't judge here. So, let's head back to the studio. You can shop this recipe. Let's see what we can come up with. I have a good feeling about this one. <laughs> <laughs> one of the questions I'm frequently asked is, how do I come up with recipe ideas? I always tell people the same things. I take foods I enjoy, deconstruct them, and then reimagine them in a more healthful way. But today, instead of telling you, I'm going to show you what I do to find inspiration and variety for my diet. This is Recipes Reimagined. The Waffle House hash brown bowl clocks in at 800 calories, with the majority of those calories coming from fat, nearly 55%. Relatively speaking, I do not think this bowl has an imbalance of macronutrients with 30 grams of protein and 62 grams of carbohydrates. That's not that bad. It's the source and the quality that I'm most concerned about, not to mention the other 48 grams of fat. Let's break down this recipe and see how we can reduce the calories but keep the delicious flavor. All right, let's get this hash brown bowl party started. So we're going to start out with one of the ingredients that I think is one of the biggest culprits to inflate some of the fat, and that is the hash brown. They can be a little bit heavy handed with the oil and you're frying it up. It tastes delicious. We're not complaining about it, but we're trying to cut calories. Grab a peeler or a small knife to peel the potato. Make it naked. Rusted potatoes have a lot of starch, which makes for crispier hash browns, so I chose this one over other potatoes. Bring a pot of water to a boil and drop in the potatoes to cook for no more than five minutes. Seriously. This makes them easier to grate and keeps the hash brown from turning purple or gray. And now with it shredded up, we're going to add in some personality. Add a pinch or two of sea salt and pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and dried chives for a pop of color. The final ingredient, we're going to add in a tablespoon of some arrowroot, our old pal. This is going to help everything to bind together, but also get it really nice and sticky so it gets really nice and crispy in the skillet. To reduce the fat, we're gonna be using a non-stick skillet. That's gonna allow us to be able to cook up the hash browns without using a lot of oil. Fire up the non-stick skillet on medium-high heat, and once hot, spray it with some avocado oil. Because I'm particular about things being uniform and to encourage portion control, I'm using an egg ring to measure out hash browns. Add an equal amount to each ring and saute for four to six minutes on each side or until the edges are crispy and ready to flip. Skillet already hot and with the flavor of the hash browns in here, let's go ahead and toss in the meat. To keep this as a leaner option and lower in fat, we're gonna be using some turkey instead of pork sausage. While the turkey sausage sizzles, chop up some mushrooms. They'll help exaggerate the sausage flavor while providing another meaty texture. Add it to the skillet and sprinkle in some fennel and sage to up the flavor even more. Cook for about six to eight minutes or until the meat mix is seared. Add in some green and we're gonna add in a bunch of it. Cook the spinach in the skillet for no more than four minutes or until the spinach has completely wilted like roses in Texas heat. Before you turn that skillet off, scramble some eggs. With everything cooked individually, I wanted to show you the way that I would deconstruct this recipe and cut the calories in certain ways. If I'm making this for myself at the house, I'd probably cook some things together. Here's how I would attempt putting this meal together in my crib. Add the hash browns back to the skillet, add the eggs, and top with the slice of reduced fat cheddar, then cover to melt. Add the spinach to a serving bowl, then add the hash browns and eggs. Top it off with the sausage mix and fresh red onions. Here's the nutritional breakdown. Our reimagined Waffle House hash brown bowl is now just under 600 calories with 25 grams of fat, 56 grams of carbohydrates, and 43 grams of protein. That's over 25% reduction in calories, with fat calories essentially sliced in half. Saturated fat also plummeted by over 60%. This is pretty good considering we could cut calories even more by using less sausage and eliminating the cheese. But yeah, cheese is life. <laughs> So, how does it taste? We arrive at the most important part, the taste test. All right. <laughs> this is gonna hurt my heart a little bit trying to decide between the old time favorite and this reimagined one. All right, here we go with our hash brown bowl. I would order this at a restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> taste that. It's pretty good, right? Okay, Kevin. Yeah, okay, you can Kevin. stay for dinner. Kevin's house. 
<laughs> and when I taste this one, still really good, but I don't know the right word to say, but the only thing that comes to mind is it almost tastes like rubber. I don't know what it is, but it's not smoky. We're not gonna stop going to Waffle House. <laughs> All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. I hope that y'all really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for giving us the inspiration to continue to do the Reimagine Recipe series. I want you to comment below what you would like to see next. We wanna know about it so that maybe we can reimagine it here in the Fit Man Cook kitchen. All right, y'all, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Remember, you gotta ring that bell, ding, 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 so that way you can be notified every time we post hot new content. And if you're missing me when I'm not posting, you can also follow me at Fit Man Cook on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter for some daily inspiration and also shots of my dog. Um, there's that, because Max is the homie. <laughs> All right, y'all, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, I want you to keep it healthy, but of course, never, ever boring. Boom! Bye, peeps. <laughs>